Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a nice big version of Chikorita. I've already made the three original starting Pokemon. I've made Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander. I figured it's time to move up a generation. If you want to make Chikorita, here's what you're going to need. You will need some black wool. You will also need dark green. And some lime green. You will also need some lime stained clay. You will also want to grab some white wool, some red wool, and finally grab yourself some light grey wool. And once you have each one of those colours right there, and once you've figured out where you want to make it, I'll be making it right here, you're going to want to kick off your Chikorita with a single black wool on the floor. Once you have your black wool, you then want to do an up left diagonal from that black wool. Then place one on top of the diagonal. Then do another up left diagonal. Place one on top. Then do another up left diagonal. You want to then place one on top of that diagonal, but you also want to go left of the diagonal by three. So that's one, two, three. You then want to go up on top of this third block by one. Then go left by one. Then do an up left diagonal. Once you've made this shape, you then want to return back up to this third block that we just went up from, and you now want to, from this third block, do three bottom left diagonals. So that's one, two, and three. You then want to go left of this third bottom left diagonal by one. Then do an up left diagonal. Go up by one. Then do another up left diagonal. Go up on top of it by eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Take this eighth block and go right of it by one. And then go up on top of that block by one. Once you've done that, you also want to go left of this 8th block by 1, and then go up on top of that block by 2. 1, 2. Then do an up left diagonal. Then go up on top of that diagonal by 3, so that's 1, 2, 3. Then place a dark green wall on top of that block. Then go right of that dark green by 1 with your black. Then take out your red wool and go up by four on top of the black. One, two, three, four. Then place a black wool on top of that red wool. What you then want to do once you've formed this row right here is take out your white wool and you want to do white wool all along the left hand side of the row that you've just formed. Once you've done that, you then want to take out your dark green wool and continue going up on top of this black wool. Start off by doing a single block. Then do a lime green wool going up. Then another dark green going up. Then do three up right diagonals. So that's one, two, three. Go right of that third upright diagonal by one. Then take out your black wool and do another upright diagonal. Go up on top of that diagonal by two. One, two. Then do another upright diagonal. Then go up by one. Then do three upright diagonals. So that's one, two, three. Then go right of that third upright diagonal by one. Then do another upright diagonal. And go right by one. Then do another upright diagonal. And go right by two. One, two. Then do another upright diagonal. And go right by seven. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then do a bottom right diagonal. Then go right by three. One, two, three. Then do a bottom right diagonal. And go right by one. Then do another bottom right diagonal. Go right by one. 
and then place two black wool underneath those two black wool that we had placed to make a square shape. You then want to extend this bottom right hand corner of this square out to the right by one. You then want to place two black wool underneath the two bottommost right hand black wool blocks like this. You then want to take the corner of this bottom right hand black wool block again and go right by one again. And then do the same sort of thing, do two black wool underneath the two most bottom right hand blocks like this. What you now want to do to finish this off is this bottom right hand corner block that we have right here, just go to the right of it by one. Then do two bottom right diagonals, so that's one and two. Go down from the second bottom right diagonal by one. Then do another bottom right diagonal and go down by two, one, two. Then go left by one. Then do another up left diagonal and go left by one. Then do another up left diagonal and go left by three, one, two, three. Then do a bottom left diagonal and go left by seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then do an up left diagonal and go left by three, one, two, three. Then do an up left diagonal and go left by three, so that's one, two, three. Then do another up left diagonal and go left by five, so that's one, two, three, four, five. You then want to do a bottom left diagonal and go down by one. Then go to the right by two, one, two. Let me show you the sort of shape that you just want to have formed. This is the big giant leaf that sits on top of Chikorita's head. Once you've formed this outline of the leaf, we have a little bit more black wool to add. So once you've reached this point right here, you now want to come and locate this block on the right hand side of the leaf. Hopefully you guys will be able to find it. It's the first kind of squarish shape that we made on the right hand side and it's the bottom left hand corner block. From this block, go left by two, one, two. Then do an up left diagonal and go left by two, one, two. Then do an up left diagonal, which is like placing a block right here. Go left of that diagonal by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then do a bottom left diagonal. Then go left by two. One, two. Then do another bottom left diagonal. And go left by two. One, two. Then do another bottom left diagonal. And go left by one. Finish this off by doing a single bottom left diagonal. This is the shape that you want to have formed inside the leaf and as you can see we've just added a little bit of detail to it. I figured whilst we're doing the outline we may as well take care of that here. Once you've reached this point right here, you now want to return all the way back to where we were building ever so slightly earlier, before we got distracted with the leaf. So return to this sideways J shape, and starting from the last black block that you placed, do a bottom right diagonal. Then go right by one. Then do three bottom right diagonals, so that's one, two, three. Go down from that third bottom right diagonal by one. Then do another bottom right diagonal. And go down by three, so that's one, two, three. Then do another bottom right diagonal. Go down by two, one, two. Then do another bottom right diagonal. Then go right by one, then down by one. Then do two bottom right diagonals, so that's one and two. Go right of that second bottom right diagonal by one. Then do both a bottom right diagonal from that block and do an upright diagonal from that block. 
Then go right of the upright diagonal by 2. 1, 2. Then do a bottom right diagonal. And go down by 5. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then do a bottom right diagonal. And go down from that diagonal by 4. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. Then go left by 1. Then go down by 2. 1, 2. Then do a bottom left diagonal. And go left by 1. Then do two up left diagonals. So that's 1 and 2. Then go up on top of the second up left diagonal by 1. Then do an upright diagonal. Then take these two blocks that we formed here and go left of each of them by 1. Then take this bottom left hand corner block that we've just formed here and go left of it by 3. So that's 1, 2, 3. Then take this second block that we just placed and go down from it by 1. Then take the third block that we just placed and go down from it by 2. 1, 2. Then do a bottom left diagonal. Then go down by 1. Connect everything together by doing a bottom left diagonal, then going left by 1. And what you want to end up with is something that should look in its entirety, if we can zoom out fast enough guys, in its entirety a little bit like this. And this is the outline of your Chikorita. Once you've reached this point right here, all we have to do now is add in some of the various details. So I suppose we'll start our way at the bottom and we'll work our way up to the top. So once you've reached this point right here, this is what you want to do next. So these first few parts, I'm just kind of just going to place what you have to place in the certain positions. And then I'm just going to show you what it should look like basically. I'm just going to place a few blocks here and there and I'm just going to show you what the certain areas that I've just placed blocks in should look like and some bits I'm actually going to have to explain but these first couple of bits like I said you should probably no problem be able to take this still right here pause the video right here can you guys see all of the blocks that I've placed? Place each one of those individual blocks on your very own Chikorita. I'm sure that you will have no trouble looking at the video and applying everything that you can see here onto your very own Chikorita. Once you've done that, you can now move on to the next bit. And like I said, this next bit's probably going to take a little bit more of an explanation. So once you've reached this point right here, we can now continue. So you're looking for this block right here. Can you guys identify this block? I'm sure you can. You won't have too much trouble. It's near where we started. On top of this block, take out your dark green wall and place one dark green. Then do two up right diagonals from this block. So that's one and two. Go right of the second upright diagonal by one. You then want to do upright diagonals until you eventually connect to the right hand side of your Chikorita, like this. And this little section that we've now formed by closing it off with our dark green wool, you then just want to completely fill it in with your dark green so let me just show you what that should look like and i'm sure that you guys will have had no trouble doing that yourselves i just figured that that's one of the things that i might just explain a little further once you've got that taken care of we can now move on so you now want to come all the way over to the left hand side of your chikorita you're looking for this weird y looking shape here First of all, you just want to place a single dark green wall in that position right there, kind of like in the top of the Y. Once you've done that, you then want to take this black wall that you guys can no doubtably see that I have highlighted here, and you want to go right of it with your lime green by one. Then do a lime stained clay. Then do a dark green next to the lime. Then, continuing going right, do three lime green walls. So that's one, two, three. Then, do two black walls, still going right. On top of the left black wall, place a lime stained clay. On top of the right black wall, place one dark green. Going right of that dark green, do four lime wall. One, two, three, four. 
4. On top of the third and fourth lime walls, place two black wool. On top of the left black wall, place a lime clay. On top of the right black wall, place a dark green wall. Once you've done that, you then want to go right of this dark green wall by three with your lime wall. One, two, three. And then on top of the second and third lime green walls, place two black wool. Then on top of that left black wool, place a lime stained clay, and on top of the right black wool, place a dark green wool. Once you've done that, all you want to do to finish this little section off is just place two black wool underneath those first initial lime clays and dark green walls, just like that. And you want to end up with something that should look exactly like this. Once you've got that taken care of, we can now move on. So, we now have the fun of taking care of the eyes. So, come all the way over to the left eye. It's where all the red, the white, all of that stuff is. You're looking for this black wall at the bottom of the eye right here. Go right of that black wall with your lime green by five. So, that's one, two, three, four, five. Like so. You then, underneath this row of lime green wool want to place this collection of wool and it's i'm just gonna do this and then show you guys the end result of it because i think it'd take quite a while to explain that whereas i think it's quite obvious what you actually have to do just by looking at it and what you're forming there is basically just chikorita's mouth pretty simple so once you've placed all of those blocks underneath your row of five lime green wool you then continuing going right from this lime green wool, you want to do a single dark green wool. Then, do a lime wool, still going right. Then, do a red wool. Then, on top of the red, do two black wool. One, two. Then, do two white. One, two. Then, do a red. Then, do a black. You want to end up with something that should look like this. Once you have that row formed, this next part is going to be extremely easy for you. So I'm now just going to build the rest of the eye, and I'm just going to show you guys what it should look like again. It's one of those things where it's a lot easier to see what you have to do instead of me trying to explain it. I, I really genuinely think it's just easier this way, so I'm just going to do exactly that, and then I'll show you guys what it should look like. So this is Chikorita's eye in its entirety. Very, very simple. As you guys can see, once you've got that first row placed so that you can use it as kind of a scale, all of the other bits of the eye are really simple. So once you've got that eye taken care of, and of course, pause this if necessary, if you need to work on that. Once you've got that taken care of, we can now move on to Chikorita's leaf. So, coming all the way up to the top of the head, where the leaf is, first of all, can you guys see where the leaf starts? Right here, where we have like this sideways J, and we have this row of three black wool. Well, first we just want to place two dark green in those positions right there. Once you've placed those two dark green, we can now do all of the rest of the details. So, coming to the right hand side of the leaf, you're looking for this block right here. Hopefully you guys can see the one that I have highlighted, it shouldn't be too hard to find. Once you've found this block, you, from this block, want to place a dark green wall. And then you want to go right of this dark green by... By eight, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then do an upright diagonal. Then go right by three. One, two, three. Then do an upright diagonal. Then go right by two. One, two. Then do an upright diagonal. You should have formed this shape. Once you've done that, you then want to fill in the under part of the leaf in with dark green wool, just as I'm doing now, and then you want to fill literally the rest of your Chikorita in with lime green wool. So I'm just going to continue filling in the leaf with dark green wool, 
Then I've got to fill it in with lime green wool, and then I have the fun of filling the rest of our Chikorita in with lime green. So I'm just going to do that now, and I may as well do it on recording, because whilst I do think it is going to take a little while, I don't think it's going to take an outrageous amount of time. So I'm just going to do this everywhere else. Got a lot of lime green to place, a lot around the body, not too much detail involved with Chikorita luckily, so, you know, hopefully the bits that we did do weren't too difficult for you guys to fill in. Now we've just got the entire body to do, of course. Chikorita is such a weird Pokemon, I wonder what it's actually based on. I mean, obviously a lot of Pokemon are based on, like, actual animals, so, you know, Magikarp, you know, it's obviously a fish, Pikachu's... Pikachu's a mouse, same thing with a load of others. What, what is Chikorita based on, I wonder? Like, I I have no clue. I suppose it's the same sort of thing as Bulbasaur. I guess what is Bulbasaur based on? I guess kind of like a really weird looking dog. I have no clue. You know what, maybe maybe I'm looking too much into Pokemon. Maybe, maybe, I always wondered that though, like what, how did they come up with Chikorita? I always just, I was a little curious, because I, I can kind of see quite a lot of the others, like it's based on, on something or some form of concept, but Chikorita's just kind of weird. I, I don't know. Maybe this is something that I have personally wrong. I do think it's a cool Pokemon though, I always liked Mega Neum. Mega Neum's pretty cool. You know, the final evolution, the thing with the big giant flower around its head? That's always cool, and I like the noise that it makes as well. A little bit strange, but cool though. Of course, after we've done at Chikorita, the two other Pokemon that I have from the... Oh god, I can never remember the names of the regions. It's is it the Johto region, the second region? Is the first one Hoenn? And is the, no, it's Kanto. Uh, you know what? From the second generation of Pokemon, I of course have two more starters to do. I have Cyndaquil and I have Totodile, my personal favorite Totodile. Who doesn't love Totodile? Who doesn't love themselves some Fraligator? See what I mean, guys? Fraligator, Alligator. That's a thing. Chikorita, not so much. What's Chikorita based on? Nobody knows. Nobody's entirely sure because Chikorita is based on nothing. It's nonsense. But once you have completely filled in your Chikorita, you should end up with something that should look, and I'm just getting a nice view, guys, for the thumbnail. That should look a little bit like this. Looking pretty good, Chikorita. Very nice, very colorful, very bright. Hopefully you guys managed to make it no problem whatsoever. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next one. As I said before, I've made the three original starter Pokemon. I've made Charmander, Squirtle, Bulbasaur. I have tutorials for all of those. I might even include them in the description, all the cards. And I'm also going to be doing Cyndaquil and Totodile, hopefully in a timely fashion. <laughs>